Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to try and answer some of your questions about the yet unannounced and unreleased DJI Mini SE drone. Now, I know there's a lot of interest out there about this particular product release because we've gotten about a million emails from viewers. All right, maybe not a million. I haven't actually counted them, but there's a lot of them. And we've gotten phone calls and text messages and YouTube comments about this particular drone, which tells me that there's a market out there for it, that people are really curious about it, that everybody wants to know about it. So I thought, let me sit down and actually think this through and answer some of those questions. Now, before I get too deep into this conversation, I don't actually have the drone. I'm not even sure the drone is real. All we've seen are pictures and leaks and rumors and whispers. So I think it's coming. Matter of fact, I'm convinced it's coming and it'll probably be coming soon. So this clip may not have a lot of life in it because if I do this clip today and it comes out tomorrow, you'll have all your questions answered. But I thought until it comes out, let me try and sort out some of the questions we've gotten from viewers because quite honestly, my fingers are numb from responding to emails. Now, another thing I want to point out is I don't actually know about this drone. I have no inside information. I'm not part of an NDA team yet. Now I'm hoping DJ sends me an email and says, Hey Rick, quit talking about the drone, sign this NDA and we'll send you some information. But to be honest with you, it's been pretty quiet over there at DJI. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on on the NDA front. But anyway, put that aside for a second. But all of these answers are going to be speculation on my part. Because again, no one has the drone. If I had it in my hands, I could answer the questions by testing it, but I don't have the drone yet. So the speculation I'm going to give you is based on hard evidence, leaks, rumors, and pictures of what the drone looks like, and then putting my nerd hat on, trying to understand exactly what the drone provides and where it fits into the marketplace, and if it's something you should pay attention to. So let me get into the questions. All right, so it starts off with, is this the Mini 3? It's not the Mini 3. Uh, let's get that out of the way right away. So where this drone fits in the sort of ecosystem of the Minis is when you look at the original Mavic Mini, which I have right here, this came out about 18 months ago. And when this was released, it blew my mind that they could actually pack that much technology into such a small airframe. And I talked about it at the time, almost like being a Mavic Pro that was shrunk down into a 250 gram package. It, it's amazing to me <laughs> that they could take that level of technology, most of it, and fit it into this small package. And the price was perfect. So I thought, this is gonna be a gateway drone for people that haven't flown before, that wanna get into the hobby, that are looking for a sophisticated drone that's sub 250 grams. So great drone, I still fly it almost every day. Then they released about six months ago, the Mini 2, which was an upgrade from the Mavic Mini. It flew a little longer, had better imaging, had a newer remote control, it used a newer version of OcuSync, um, a fantastic drone. It's still, hands down, my favorite small drone to fly. This is my take it everywhere, almost forget you've got it with you, because you can shoot video anywhere in 4K in this one. So both fantastic drones. Both are drones you should take a hard look at if you're looking to get into the hobby. But this is 18 months ago, this is six months ago. They can't possibly release an upgrade to this Mini 3 only six months after the Mini 2 hitting the street because a lot of people that bought this are gonna be really frustrated if the new Mini 3 has obstacle avoidance in it, or it's got a better imaging package, maybe it shoots 4K at 60 frames a second. I don't know what they're gonna build in a Mini 3, but from a marketing perspective, it would be a disaster to release a new drone six months later, although, I just did a review a couple of days ago, or an overview, of the new product from Hubson, which is the Xeno Pro Mini, which is the tiny little Mini Pro, which is the tiny drone that does have crash avoidance on it, has a longer flight time and everything else, so maybe that'll push the Mini 3 out sooner. But this isn't the Mini 3. Where this fits in the market is below the Mavic Mini, based on price and features. Now, a lot of people said, well, is it really a Mavic Mini? It kind of is then how can they sell it cheaper? Well, I'll tell you, the way you sell something cheaper like this is not cheaper, but less expensive, is you take the technology, you put it out in the market, it costs you an awful lot of money to develop this. Remember, the molds for this, the actual parts that make the cabinet and the plastic and everything else are molds that have to be created. And they go through a lot of revisions and a lot of design changes and everything else. But once they finally settle on the molds and they're doing this injection molding for the plastic and all the parts and sourcing and everything else, the more you sell of those, the lower your cost gets because you buy a lot more parts so you can actually lower the cost. Plus, as you put it in the market, you can figure out engineering ways to make it less expensive by shrinking your printed circuit board or, or doing some other magic in the manufacturing process to lower the cost. So you've already made your money back on the mini product. You've, you've built the molds, you've sold the product, you've got a huge volume of it. By any measure, this was, I think, hands down, the most popular drone DJI has ever released, uh, especially since it's a smaller drone and less expensive. So all that's been recouped. Now, if you take that same form factor, 
and you pull a little more cost out of it. Maybe you don't build it with OcuSync like this one. You build it with enhanced Wi-Fi. You've already got the molds made. You've got battery companies that are building your batteries. You can lower the cost of that based on the number of products you're building. So what you're getting with the Mini SE is you're getting a Mavic Mini-like feature uh, for less money. And again, I don't know the price in this one. I'm speculating you're going to see it probably in the big box stores for $249, $299, which I think is a killer price for the technology they're gonna build into that drone. So it isn't the Mini 3, the Mini 3 is up here. If this one's 549, the Mini 3, my guess would be 599, 649, something like that, coming in just under the Air 2S. But anyway, it's below that. Uh, who is this drone for? That's the question that was probably the top of the list. Everybody said, look, I'm flying a lot of drones. This is something I should pay attention to. Uh, my answer is no, it isn't. So if you're flying bigger drones today and you're looking for a more portable drone that's less expensive, go with the Mini 2. This is the drone to own if you're flying a Mavic 2 today, Evo products, Skydio. If you're looking for a smaller portable drone, this is the guy you want. This drone is specifically targeted at flyers that maybe aren't in the market today that are looking to get into flying drones and they don't want to buy a drone that's $399 from somebody else that the minute you put it up in the air, you've got to worry about balancing. Maybe it only flies for six minutes. Maybe the software is really goofy and it's hard to control it. Or maybe you put it up in the air and it flies off and hits a tree. You want to go with a company like DJI that's been around for a while. They've got nine generations of drones on the market. This is a drone for new flyers that are cost conscious, which everybody is. But if you can buy a drone at $249 or $299, that'll fly as far as that Mini SE spec, show it well, and have uh, you know great recording capabilities on board and fly for a long period of time. That's exactly who it's targeted for. So I think that is the drone that DJI is gonna kibosh. They're gonna kill and crush that, that 250 gram and lower market. And they're also gonna crush the market under the $300 price point, which by the way, is a gigantic section of the market that DJI has never played in before. There's a lot of companies that only build drones that fit in that sub $299 price range. The DJI enter in that market is a shot across the bow of all those companies to say, the big dog is here and we're serious about that market space. So I guess the bottom line is that drone is built for those type of flyers. Now that's a great way to get started and all the skill sticks you develop on there and your ability to fly and get used to flying in the air and spinning around and figuring out where you are will transfer to bigger drones. So I think what DJI is hoping is, even if they're losing money on that Mini SE, is to get people used to flying and then wanting a more sophisticated drone down the road. So I think it's sort of a starter drone that brings you into the hobby. All right, the next question is um, controller. There's a lot of confusion out there about the controller. And I said in the clip that I did a couple of days ago, I don't think it's coming with the Gen 2 controller. Now, I know where this confusion is coming from because there's a lot of leaks out there, a lot of pictures out there leaking. And the first picture I'm showing you is from the Walmart website. Now, it's been up, it's been down, it's been up, it's been down. I, got the, I snapped this off their website when it was up. It does show it with the new controller. Now, that's interesting because this is a more expensive controller, and this has OcuSync 2 built into it. The new Mini SE is going to run on Wi-Fi. I still think you're going to see the Mini SE with the old-style controller for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's enhanced Wi-Fi. You don't need the new controller to do enhanced Wi-Fi. This is a less expensive controller. This controller has been the DJI lineup forever. So they've already got the molds made and all the things I talked about before about sourcing parts and building it efficiently really applies here. Plus, they probably have a lot of stock left over from the Mini that they can just put this in a box along with the Mini SE and sell it. Another reason, if I get nerdy here, is that they're different technologies. When you look at how these two drones charge, this drone charges through a micro USB connection. This drone and controller charges through a USB-C cable. If you sell me the Mini SE with this controller, now what I've got is a drone that charges through micro uh, USB micro and the controller charges through USB-C. Now I have to include two cables. Now there is a way around that. If they include a USB-C cable like this one, they might also include an adapter like this that pops on the end that converts the USB-C to a micro USB. And that would be a good way to get around it, but I don't think there's I'm, I'm convinced there's no way it's coming with the Gen 2 controller. Now, what I'm going to show you next is a graphic that was snapped uh, kind of in a Walmart someplace, somebody in the back room, somebody out in the field, snapped this picture of what's called the call tag. And if you want to buy the drone, you take the tag up to the counter and say, I'd like to buy this Mini SE. And they go in the back, they bring it out, and they sell you the Mini SE. If I look in the back of that, what do you see down there in the lower left-hand corner? It's the Gen 1 controller. Now that's from a Walmart. That's actually in one of the stores, ready to go out in the shelves the minute they're allowed to start selling the drone. I would trust that more than I would the website 
from Walmart where you've got some webmaster out there that doesn't understand anything about drones and just grabbed a picture of the original Mini, Mavic Mini, or I should say the Mini 2, and stuck that up on their website. So I think that's where the confusion is. I would be shocked, quite honestly, if the Mini SE comes with this controller, and I'd bet the farm that you're going to see it with the Gen 1 controller, but who cares? It, they both work great, and this one is a fantastic controller. It's been around forever, holds your phone really nice, and it's just a wonderful product. So don't lose any sleep over that. All right, a lot of questions around OcuSync. Why didn't they build OcuSync into it? OcuSync is a technology is trademarked and patented by DJI. It's definitely a better technology than enhanced Wi-Fi, but they both are very similar in the topology. What you've got with Wi-Fi is you've got either a 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz band that you're transmitting over, and on that band there's various frequencies that fit into that band. So what DJI is doing, both their enhanced Wi-Fi and OcuSync, is they're actually looking at all the frequencies that are in that band, and they're going to pick the one that actually is the strongest connection at that time at that location between the drone and the controller. And then if, if it gets busy or it gets noisy and there's all kinds of chatter in there, they'll find another frequency and switch to that frequency, let the drone know, hey, I'm moving over to this frequency, move over here and catch me, and we can start talking on that frequency. Both enhanced Wi-Fi and the OcuSync technology use similar technologies, but OcuSync is a little bit smarter, it's a little bit faster, and it's a little bit more secure in the way they sort of bundle up those bits that they're firing back and forth. Now, it'd be great if they built OcuSync into it, but unfortunately, the technology that's required in the remote and in the drone to enable OcuSync, whether it's OcuSync 2 or O3, is a lot more expensive, and it's really hard to put that in a drone that's less than 300 bucks. For my money, enhanced Wi-Fi, which was in the original Mavic Mini, is perfectly fine because I'm not going to fly two miles away, and you shouldn't fly two miles away either because we have, first of all, we have visual line of sight requirements, which mean you can't really fly the drone further than you can see it, but more importantly, well, maybe not more importantly, but just as important, if you fly the drone that far away and it gets windy, you're going to lose your drone because these guys are good, but they're not good in heavy winds, so if you fly it over that treetop over there and you get out a mile and a half and the wind's kicking up over there, kiss your drone goodbye. So enhanced Wi-Fi is great to keep it close within visual line of sight, 1,500, 2,000 feet, which really is the fun part. If you're at a lake, you're going to shoot the lake, put it up in the air, keep it within visual line of sight, you'll be fine. This one does have OcuSync 2 on it. I fully expect the Mini 3 will go to 03 as well, which is the latest version of OcuSync, but you're not going to see OcuSync in the Mini SE. All right, the next question is where can I buy it? I don't think this is something you're going to see uh, a lot of places. I think what they're doing with this product is they're building it to go to the big box stores. So we already saw the leaks from Walmart. I expect we'll see it at Costco, probably Sam's Club. All the big box stores are going to put this thing out. They're going to hang that sale tag on a hook someplace, and they're going to blow it out for $249, $299, and that's where you're going to buy it. Now, DJI may sell it on their own website. It's their product. I'd be surprised if they didn't. But a lot of times, they'll build a product for a large big box store like that and give them exclusive on it. So you may see this only sold at Walmart or maybe only sold at Costco or the Price Club because they want to have a market that they can capture from a retailer perspective. And they've got to make a huge commitment to DJI to say, look, we'll sell 100,000 of these drones if you build them for us, but you can't sell it anywhere else. So it'll be interesting to see how marketing plays out with that. But my bet, if I was a betting man, and I'm not, but if I was a betting man, you're going to see it at one or two retailers and that's it. You're not going to see it on everybody's website for sale because just like in the old days, I used to work a lot with a company called Crazy Eddie out of New Jersey. And what Crazy Eddie would do is they would sell a VCR. Can you remember those, the VCRs? They would sell a VCR that was the same as everybody else, but it was just a little bit different. The model number was a little bit off. And that way they could say, we guarantee the lowest prices anywhere on the planet. Well, that's because you couldn't compare the price because it was a different model. It's kind of the same thing here. They're going to want to own this. They're going to want to sell it exclusively. And that's a good thing. Who cares? If you got to go there to buy it, you buy it there if you want to, want to fly the drone. All right, next one, is it a good value? I can answer that question in one word. Absolutely, it's going to be a good value. $249, $299 for a drone that flies like the Mavic Mini is a no-brainer. If you've ever thought about getting into this hobby, this is the drone to own. Now, I haven't flown it yet. I'm going to, I promise you when it comes out, I'll pick one up. I'll bring it in. I'll test it like I test everything else. I'll put it up against other drones. But just based on the specifications, if it's anything like the Mavic Mini... $299, $249 is going to be a steal for that drone. So it's an absolute great value. If you're thinking of getting into the hobby, that's the drone to own to get started with. It's also a great drone, by the way. Like, I fly with my kids. I know a lot of families get out in the fresh air and sunshine, and maybe dad and mom are flying a bigger drone like the Mavic 2, and the kids want to fly it, and you're thinking, man, uh, it's a $1,500 drone. I don't know if I want Junior flying that drone. Well, buy Junior one of these mini SEs, and then you can go out and you can fly as a family, and you can keep an eye on the kids. They're flying, having fun. You're flying your Mavic 2 or whatever drone you've got. So it's a good second drone. Do I need to register? 
Well, I'm in the U.S. In the U.S., anything under 250 grams doesn't need to be registered with the FAA. I would still argue it's not a big deal to register with the FAA. I always get grief for saying that, but registration is a simple matter, just like a dog tag, where you go online, you put the application through with your name, the serial number of the drone if you're going to do a commercial. If you're not going to do a commercial, just put your name, address, you pay them five bucks, and as a hobbyist, you can fly as many drones as you own at that point, and you get this really nice registration number you can stick on your drone, and you look like a regular airplane. So what's the big deal there? Uh, but you don't have to do that. You do have to follow the rules. And again, for basic uh, information, keep it under 400 feet, keep it in visual line of sight, don't fly over people, um, don't fly too far away where you can't see it, don't fly into your airport, stay out of NFZs, all the basic stuff that makes you a safe pilot, that's all. So no registration required. And then the last one was, and this is interesting, a lot of people were complaining that there's too many releases coming from DJI. And, and I get that, right? It's hard to keep track of all this stuff. You know, oh, there's a new one coming. Is the Mini 3 coming? What about the Mavic 5? I heard there's a Phantom 5 coming. Oh, should I wait? Should I wait? My, my suggestion is always, and this is the gentle suggestion, is don't wait. Don't wait. Life is short. I mean, you've all heard that before. I know it's one of those trite things to say that, but summer's here. And it's beautiful weather. And anything you can do to get out of the house and out into that sunshine and that fresh air to an area you've never gone before with your family is something you wouldn't want to miss out on. So that's sort of waiting for the latest technology, the next generation of technology. I know we all get caught up in that cycle of buying the newest and latest stuff, but don't wait. Buy this drone, get out there and start flying. There's other stuff coming. And there are going to be other releases. You know, I bought the Mini 2. The Mini 3 is coming. Am I going to be mad the Mini 3's out? Probably not. If there are features that are important in the Mini 3 and I decide I want to buy it, I'll sell the Mini 2 or I'll give it away on the channel. So I'm going to follow new technology. But the, the value you're getting out of flying in this hobby is putting the drone up in the air, 400 feet up in the air, 1,000 feet out, surveying that beautiful lake. This Mini SE at 249 299 is going to give you 50 60 70% the same experience as flying and Inspire 2, that's thousands of dollars. So don't wait, get the drone, get out there and start flying as soon as you can. And if you can't afford that drone, I totally understand that. There are drones that are even less than $200 you can buy and get out there and start flying. DJI doesn't make one, but they did make the Rise Tello, which I think is a fantastic drone for you to fly in the backyard and in the house to get used to flying. But, you know, I think it's a great value and I think it's something you should jump on. So that's all I had for today. I tried to keep this clip under 40 minutes like most of my clips. And I tried to answer the most popular questions we got in. But if I've missed something or you have other questions, drop it in the comments below and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Or just shoot me a text or an email and we'll get back to you quickly there. Now, uh, in addition to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I say this every time, but it's super important right now. We've got a lot of stuff that's going to be launching in July and August that you're definitely going to want to get in on, including giveaways. And we're going to start up the Drone Valley team. We're going to start doing live streams. we got a ton of stuff coming. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family. And that way you'll get updates when we post something new. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention is if you do need accessories, you know we have a website, uh, dronevalley.com. We sell accessories for all the drones that are on the market today. If you buy something from the website, and there's links below to all that stuff, you'll be supporting the channel. It allows me to do more of this stuff on a full-time basis, which is something I'm really itching to do. So thanks an awful lot for all the support you've shown us so far. And I can't tell you how much joy I get out of this hobby. I say it every time I get a chance to talk to anybody about it. I'm smiling ear to ear because when I finish this clip, I'll be outside with this guy up in the air, flying it over this beautiful lake that's near me that I haven't had a chance to fly at before. And that experience is such an enriching experience that uh, I hope all of you enjoy it. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.